Hi, I wanted to make a video on the traditional tools used to make comics. Um, I'm going to try to get everything that I can in this video at once because it's hard to find posts um, or videos with all the information that you might want to need. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to um, go through this in sections and kind of talk about the tools, the different brands, and how to use them, um, just generally. So hopefully this video is helpful. Stay tuned if you want to know about how to make comics using traditional tools and techniques. So the first thing is obviously you're going to want to put some pencils down. Um, the main pencil that I use is this um, it's, well, it's a Tombow, <clears throat> it says for high precision, precision drafting, um, it's called a Mono, that's the brand of pencil, and it, but it's a 3H, and <clears throat> if you don't know what the, the 3, what the H and the B stand for, most just like pencils that you, you know, a regular pencil will be a, an HB, so that's somewhere in the middle, the um, the more numbers that you put in front of it, in front of the letter, just denotes how hard or soft it is. So this is a 3H. I think they go up to like 6 or something like that. So 6B would be the softest and gets the darkest line. Um, 6H would be the hardest and gets the lightest line. But it also digs more into the paper. Um, and the softer ones will eventually be harder to re erase they'll smudge the paper more so you want to pick a pencil that if you're depending on how hard you press down when you're drawing and also um how much you'll be kind of erasing and redrawing you want to pick a pencil that works um for those specific needs of yours for me i press down really hard so i do risk damaging the paper, but because of that, and I also erase a lot, because of that, I like a lighter pencil in general, just so that when I put inks over it, um, it will be harder to notice when I scan them in. So that's a 3H, just your standard pencil. You don't need to use a 3H, obviously, like I said, but this is what I use. I really like this pencil. I like the brand Tombow. I suggest checking them out. Um, but yeah, just your standard graphite pencil. This page is drawn with this pencil. Um, this is just a 4H, so obviously I like the harder pencils. So this is a, um, the brand is Pacific, Pacific Arc, <clears throat> and this is a lead holder. So you can actually put, if you press this down, the lead will come out. You see this opens up here, and the lead... Oh, I'm sorry, this opens up and the lead will come out. And this, I think I have like a uh, an HB, standard HB lead in here. And you can turn this around to show the different, so you can remember. I really hope you all can see this. Um, but yeah, so you can put colored lead in here. You can put any uh, type of lead that you want um, so that you can just change them out. And these do take either a razor or a special type of pencil sharpener to sharpen. So you want to um, make sure that you have those if you buy one of these. These are also a bit expensive. They can be a bit expensive. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is just a, nub, a pencil nub holder. So when it gets down to a certain, you know, a certain length you can just slide this in there this kind of locks it this contraption there are different kinds of these but this is like the very standard one so those are your graphites um something that traditional comic book artists and um uh, animators will do is and you've probably seen this if you're, if you're looking at this video and you're interested in this stuff, you've probably seen this before, but they'll use a blue pencil 
and they'll go over that with either a darker graphite pencil or straight into inks and colors. The blues will be sort of a tone like this, like a lighter blue. And that's just referred to as blue line, but you can really use any color that you want. The idea of blue line um, is that the back in the day, when things were photographed <clears throat> or photocopied and eventually scanned, the cameras or um, equipment that they're using to, you know, scan the, the black lines, the inks, would not pick up the colored pencils. It's, it's too light and it won't register on the device. So you'll eventually be left with only the black lines, only the darkest marks on the paper. Okay, so that is the deal with using color. And it's also good because you can kind of go into as much color as you want and then either refine it with a dark graphite or um, go straight into your inks and, and finish it that way without kind of having to worry about all the erasing or that those lines reproducing, like I said. So um, that's a really, I think, a key part of cartooning is working with the colored the colored pencils not everybody does this but it is a very it is tradition just for the reason that it is so helpful and kind of fundamental in terms of building up a drawing and being able to just not worry about it later when you finish it so this is I think they're called editing pencils You'll see some people on YouTube use these. So the red side, red is, is lighter than, than blue. This red is lighter than blue. So you can use the red and then you can flip it over and refine the drawing with the blue. So that's like a, just a really nice two in one tool. Um, and then further from that, you could, you know, add some black lines. This is what I use on all of my pages. <clears throat> the page you're looking at back here is my sketch, but then I will transfer that onto a piece of Bristol board, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and I will often trace that with, trace this original sketch with this um, red pencil. These are, yeah, Pilot, they're called Pilot Color Eno pencils, and you can get these on Amazon, um, and there are different leads that each each pencil will come with its own color lead, but you can also buy the lead separately. I like the red ones just because that's, you know, my color preference. I used to use green, but um, I just like the reds. I actually like how it looks on my original pages, which... If you're making original pages, there's always the possibility that you'll be able to sell those later. So it is not the most important thing in the world, but maybe it is something to think about that your original pages might look a certain way. Um, so I like this red, um, and it's just a mechanical pencil, and this top bit comes off to have an eraser. Colored pencils are not easy to erase. But they, but like I said, since this stuff is not going to reproduce, they erase just enough that you can, um, that you can, like, not worry about it. Uh, these are also just, this is, these are called Cool Erase. I think they're from, yeah, they're Prismacolor Cool Erase. I have a bunch of these, but these are just some example colors, also erasable. Same deal. Um, yeah, uh, erasers, <clears throat> this is a Factus eraser, I like this, but I'm honestly moving t more towards this plastic eraser, um, I find that this actually erases better than that Factus, um, this, yeah, the plastic erasers, and then I forget what the other 
type, the like standard type of eraser is, but I think that these plastics actually work better and they're a softer eraser. So you're not gonna pick up as much inks if you're erasing pencil over your inks, like when you're finishing up your, your board. Um, this is, um, um, yeah, a mechanical eraser. Um, so it's this big weird looking contraption. You just press a button and it rotates very fast. And it's good for getting in small areas. Um, I use this a lot. Um, I hadn't got one for many years. Um, but I decided to get one a few months ago and I, I really love it. And there are different brands. The, this is like a cheaper one, but it works just fine. It will stay charged for months. Okay. Um, it's like a USB charge, which is cool. Um, it erases really well. There, again, is the risk, just like with a, a hard pencil, there is a risk of digging into the paper a little bit. But you won't be erasing large areas anyway, so it's not that huge of a deal. And you just go light with it. Just be mindful of it. I, I recommend these if you're the type of person that likes to get into small areas and erase and adjust things. So I think that that's all for pencils right now. Um, out of this, I would say the most important thing is getting a pencil that you're comfortable using um, in terms of like your, your the, the way that you use a pencil, how hard you're pressing down, how much you're going to be erasing. Um, and then trying out the colored pencils for that blue line or whatever color you're using to refine over top. I think that that's a really helpful thing to do and um, a, a staple of the industry. So try that out. Okay, let's, we'll move on now. Okay, so here's the really fun part of making comics, and that's inking. Um, there are multiple ways that you can do this. The most traditional um, inking tools are the brushes and the, um, the pen nibs, the metal nibs, the dip pens. So the brushes um, that's when you see like that really uh, nice flowy line they're usually used on old comics I think today more people use uh, pens and the dip pens um, but the brush is really a amazing tool if you can figure out how to use it it takes a long time to figure out how to really use a brush properly. Maybe you'll be one of those people that it just comes naturally to, but I think for me and a lot of people, it, it takes a while. Um, but it's worth it when you finally kind of get the hang of it. So this is, um, there, there are a couple brands that people recommend and a house staple actually, we'll look at this first, a house staple, I keep saying that word, um, is this it's the Windsor Newton um, series 7 it's a sable tip brush so the the tip is actually made from sable which is a weasel um, so it's it's real hair uh, having trouble getting light on everything here and I apologize for that but it's real hair, <clears throat> and the, I guess, you know, you can make your decision on whether or not you think that that's appropriate, but um, this has been used for many, many years in comics. So Windsor Newton Series 7, this is a number two, which is pretty often used. A number one and three are often used as well. A sable tip. This is a watercolor brush. But for that reason, it picks up these, these inks very well. And 
is able to, to maintain great control over them because ink can be quite viscous, um, especially when it's new. And you'll notice that I have this grip on uh, pencils and, and brushes and pens, and that's just one of those foam grips you can get at the dollar store. It just kind of, you know, feels nicer, and sometimes it's, it's easier in your hand, and sometimes it's nice to have a wider grip. Um, some people find that that helps them control the brush better. Um, so yeah, so that's my number two. This is a number three. So they say that back in the day, Winsor Newton used to be a really great brand, and it was the best brand you could buy. Could could buy, um, but now the quality is kind of going down on them. And now this is called the Raphael, and it's supposed to be what the Winsor Newtons kind of used to be. Um, so yeah, it's a sable tip brush, very high quality brush, watercolor brush. Um, that you can use for inking. And this is a number three. Uh, same thing, so yeah, same thing as the Winsor Newton, but a little higher quality. And honestly, for me, this is the brush that I use um, more often, just like in general, unless I'm trying to get a, a finer line with my number two. But the quality is better than the Winsor Newton, so I recommend this Raphael brush. So, okay. Um, that's brushes. And then this is just a, 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 like a wide flat brush um, that I'll just use for filling in large areas of black. Then these are your um, dip pens. This is a, um, I forget what the brand is, excuse me. Yeah, um, so this is a Kuratake um, G-nib. Kuratake makes these manga pens and they're really great, I suggest them. Um, th especially this G pen is pretty commonly used in manga and in, and in general. Um, it's a really flexible nib. You can see that these pens, they like open up when you press down on them. So you can get really thin and thick lines. Um, yeah, it's, this is a really versatile pen. It's called the G-Nib. Um, then this is a really standard um, tool in standard type of nib in comics. And this is the Hunt 102 from Speedball. Um, I didn't use this for a long time. I used what, uh, I used one of those Kuratake nibs that I thought was the same thing. Turns out it wasn't. You'll hear a lot about this nib. Um, when I finally got it, I was like, yeah, this is, this is the one. This is what you should be using. Um, or at least I understand why people like it so much. Um, it is also a really versatile, thin to thick um, nib can't see it but it, it does open up pretty wide um, gets a really nice fine line a really nice thick line it feels great but it is kind of a delicate nib so it wears off pretty quickly some people will say that you should change them like after every page um, you could probably go a little longer than that depending on what you're doing and how much you care about the uh, Kind of quality of the line or how thin it can get but yeah hunt 102 by speedball great nib um very much a standard in comics this is another speedball nib and it's hard to see but it's a round tip and you can get these in various sizes um this is a really small one but yeah, it'll get kind of more like a pen line. Um, I think this has been used for lettering um, in comics or just if you want like kind of a deadline without any variation. Um, yeah, it's a round tip. I don't know the actual name for it. And I keep these all in separate um, 
pen holders just so that I can grab them and use them whenever I want. Also, some pen holders will not take smaller or larger nibs, so you kind of have to figure that out. So then you have pens. Oh, we'll forget about that one. That one's broken anyway. Um, decided to run away. Um, so then we have pens, like traditional pens. This, these are your microns. You've probably seen the, I mean, these are like some of the most common fine liners um, that people use and they're disposable <clears throat> and yeah they're like felt tip or plastic tip or something you can get them in different sizes they're from sakura but these disposable fine liners are basically imitating these these are rapidographs um This is my favorite one, it's a number one, has a really nice uh, line with, you can get these in all kinds of different sizes. They are more expensive, one pen will run from like 20 to $25. But if you're a pen nut and a traditional tool nut, <clears throat> I highly recommend them and I think you will be very satisfied with them. A lot of people get frustrated with them because there's a big cleaning process and maintain like a maintenance process to these pens people will tell you that you have to clean them once a week and keep them unstored with ink unless you're using them every day i don't think that that's necessarily true but you definitely do want to keep up with them like i do it every like uh two or three months or maybe every month or something i'll go and clean all of them with pen cleaner this is pen cleaner, it's just like a white solution. You let stuff sit in there. You can do this with your nibs as well. Just let it sit in there for like a half hour, wash it off with water. Um, I'm not gonna go through the actual cleaning process of these pens, but there are videos on YouTube of how to use and maintain these pens. Um, Rapidograph, um, it's by, these are by Koenor, but there's also another company called um, Rotring, and I think Stadler also makes Rapidographs. Um, so yeah, so let me just show you what it looks like. Um, hopefully you can see this. Kind of a complicated system here. Um, but yeah, they come to this really fine point, and what happens is there's actually a little pin inside of this little pin. Um, very delicate but when you push down on the paper the pen the pin pushes up and releases ink um, you're supposed to use them straight up and down like this but this specifically this number one I find works perfectly on its side which so that I really like um, and gravity will also affect how this pen is working so the more straight up and down it is, the easier the ink will flow out. These are like vintage pens, basically, like, and they eventually kind of phase them out and people use these, but these are widely available. You can still get them. Okay, so that's a rapidograph. Um, highly recommend those. At least trying them out if you can, if you have the money to spare, because I think that the, um, you'll find that the quality of ink that comes out um, is really worth it. I use this one for just drawing. These are thinner. I also use those a lot, and I use this one. It's like a kind of a medium thickness, and I use those for panel borders a lot. And then they get like really thick. Like this is the thickest one I have. These are also good for panel borders. Um, okay. You fill the rapidograph with these. They come in this little um, container. Uh, but, and it has like a little nib on it that makes it easy to fill. But I also buy the same kind of ink or a similar kind of ink um, from the same brand in these larger jars, which is useful. It's, it's nice to spend the extra money to get these larger jars so you can just have them sitting around. Um, and they just have like a thing that pops out. 
makes it easier to fill small containers or the rapidograph itself. Okay, for ink, especially if you're gonna be putting colors over things, you wanna get waterproof India ink. India ink is the type of ink that you're gonna to want to use. There are a million different brands, a million different variations on India ink, but it is India ink that you want to use. You're gonna be able to dip your pens in this, dip your brushes in it, load your pens with it. And it's the right consistency and however it's made so that it will stay on the paper, it will not smudge easily, it will dry more quickly, it will go over pencils easily, India ink. Um, yeah, this is waterproof drawing ink for paper and film, it says. Um, this is just, it's called universal, which means all that. There's also a different kind from this brand, which is more suited for filling rapidographs and not um, kind of blocking or clogging up. All right, whiteout. Um, I recommend this deleter whiteout. Uh, you can go on their website, it's a Japanese company and they have a bunch of different inks and whiteouts. This is deleter white number two. And I haven't tried the other ones, but I see a lot of people using this and I really like this. So I think something about the number two, it's like the kind of right sort of viscosity that you're gonna want for, for working on paper and going over it with pencil and pen. Um, it's kind of like coagulated in here, but you just like put some water in there and keep it kind of hydrated <clears throat> and it'll get to a nice consistency, um, which I have heard people say should be like between thin and thick, kind of the consistency of um, like sour cream or something like a, a nice whipped up sour cream. Um, and that dries very quickly and has a very like kind of papery finish when it dries, which makes it good for going over with inks. This brush I use specifically for the white because you don't want to be dipping this in your black pen jar and then getting gray ink eventually or vice versa, getting black into here. You really don't want to get black in here. This is also a deleter pen with white in it. It's kind of like a paint marker. I never use this because, well, it kind of broke on me and I don't, I really don't like it that much. Um, I couldn't figure it out, but but other people really love this, so maybe you want to check it out. Um, Deleter Neo Pico, <clears throat> kind of like a, a white paint marker. You may have seen this. It's just a white gel pen, Jelly Roll 10. This is actually pretty good for um, getting small areas of white. And then, like, letting it dry, layering it up, because it does go on kind of translucent, but... Um, if you just build it up, it's great for doing like little spots, little stars, little um, uh, white shines in people's eyes and stuff like that.